So it appears that the PlayStation 5 Pro would soon be on shelves. And this was a console that the PlayStation community have been hyping up for some time now. Yes, these ponies were saying that this console was going to do 8K 120 frames per second. Some, per, some of them was even saying that this uh, PlayStation 5 Pro was more powerful than a 4090. That this thing was going to cost $700 and we told you and told you and told you. And instead of you all just saving your money, like we told you, you were like, I'll never do it. And guess what? This thing's more powerful than a 49. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. It just, it is. A friend of mine, he called me. He has a 4090. He was like, look, we, I, I struggle with this. You know, he said he's struggling with it because he's seen that this thing do things that the 4090 can't do. This is a sickness. It is deviant. Therefore, we don't want it. <laughs> so, yes, some of these guys were saying that, you know, the PlayStation 5 Pro has 67 teraflops. Wow. Some were saying it had 33 teraflops. I mean, this was, they were saying this was an atom bomb. It just was going to blow away the Xbox Series X and PCs. <laughs> that is what these ponies were saying. But it just so happened that the specs is out for the PlayStation 5 Pro. And guess what? It is only 16.7 teraflops. <laughs> I mean, after these guys saw that PlayStation 5 Pro is only 16.7 teraflops, I mean, they started to act like this. That was a funny clip. Yes, these ponies are scared of what the future might hold for PlayStation and the PlayStation 5 Pro. But today, what we are going to talk about? Today, we are going to talk about how Square Enix again has crystallized what are their plans moving forward. And guess what? Their plans moving forward is looking more like a multi plat future for everyone. In addition to that, there are still some ponies out there who believe that the PlayStation 5 Pro is really a next generation. It's basically a next gen console. That is what they're saying in their talking points and so forth. But we are going to see how one of the uh, PlayStation 5 CEOs, he is saying to hear what ponies, pat down, temper your expectations. That is what he's saying. So you know what? Let's get it. This is a sickness. Let's get it. So before we continue, guys, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. It will help out the channel and you will be doing me a favor. Now, when you tell you do that, of course, you're getting some of the best uh, Xbox content you have on this app. In addition to that, you get some Nintendo news every now and again. And of course, we specialize. We have, you know, our degree in Sony Pony Salt. Now, if this type of content interests you, please consider subscribing today. Now, let's get back to the video. First up, let's see what gamers was playing last week on the three different platforms. We are going to look at the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series console, and of course, PC. Look at this. So here we have the weekly active users for each platform. We know that the top 5 in PC is Counter-Strike, Helldivers 2, uh, Deadlock, the Factorio. Now when we look at the Xbox side, we're seeing um, the top 5 Call of Duty, Fortnite, Roblox, uh, Grand Theft Auto and Minecraft. So there are two first party games in the first 5 that Xbox players are playing. But look at the PlayStation side. Uh, Call of Duty, uh, Fortnite, Grand Theft Tef Auto 5, uh, NBA 2K25, and Dragon Ball Z, uh, the new Dragon Ball Z. So I have a question for the Sony fans. Where is Helldivers 2 on this list? Why isn't PlayStation gamers playing Helldivers 2? This is another big exposure 
and these guys have been exposed because they are not playing their their own exclusives but not only that we notice in that uh, list there's not one playstation 5 or one playstation 4 game on that list in the top 5 far more so the top 15 but we are seeing what microsoft you know was working with when it is they came to the dungeon so yes uh it's very clear that the sony fans don't play their games a lot of the Sony players are buying a Sony platform for the multiplex. That's clear based on what we are seeing here on this uh, Sakuna chat. So guys, let me hear what you thought about, you know, the PlayStation 5 fans are not playing their games. They are not even playing their exclusives based on what we are seeing from that chat. Let me know in the comment sections below. Next up, let's talk about Square Enix. We know Square Enix for a long time had a good working relationship with Sony and PlayStation. On a matter of fact, you know, because of that working relationship, Sony would have uh, procured a lot of, you know, exclusive titles coming to the PlayStation platform. Now, because of that, um, we know that over the years, although they had a special deal with uh, PlayStation, Square Enix games was not doing too well on that platform. We can think about Forspoken. That game flopped harder than uh, Free Willy on dry land. In addition to that, we would have seen that Foam Stars, that was an exclusive, uh, how to say, game, and that too flopped. In addition to that, we would have seen how uh, there were reports of Square Enix saying that they were disappointed uh, of the Final Fantasy 16 sales. So because of all of that, and I'm guessing more, um, that is why Square Enix um, is not having a good time now with uh, having exclusives on PlayStation. That is why they are they are reiterating uh, time and time again that there will be no more exclusive games going forward. We're not talking about the existing deals, but going forward on the PlayStation platform. Listen and, uh, as, as they reiterate that in this article. Final Fantasy producer claims Square plans to release games simultaneously on Xbox going forward. Yoshida recently said he'd like to see Final Fantasy 16 on Xbox. Final Fantasy producer Naoki Yoshida has said that Square Enix plans to release games simultaneously on Xbox going forward. In an interview with 4Gamer for Fantasia Neo Dimension, Yoshida, known by fans as, Yoshi P, said that Square plans to launch games on all platforms simultaneously, more and more. Of course, we want you to play it a lot on other platforms as well, he said. This time, we will also release the Xbox Series 10s version at the same time. In the future, Square Enix titles will be released simultaneously on each platform more and more, but since this is close to the first release, we would like Xbox users to play it as well. Earlier this year Yoshida said that he'd like to release Final Fantasy 16 on Xbox platforms. During an interview with Video Games, Yoshida was asked if he could offer any news on a potential release for the game on Microsoft consoles. Of course we did announce the PC version of the game, so looking towards the Xbox version, we do want to release it on Xbox, he said. But when it comes to the specifics such as when the game would be available and such, we are not in a position to be able to share anything. But of course, I want to say that it's not as if there's zero hope, and we very much do want to achieve that, he added. So players should not give up in terms of their hopes. Final Fantasy 16 is one of several recent PS5 exclusives that have failed to meet Square Enix's sales expectations, leading the publisher to announce plans to shift to a multi-platform strategy. Now the question is, who is to blame? Who is to blame for, you know, Square Enix not bringing these games uh, exclusive to the PlayStation platform? Um, and that is a self-explanatory question that is none other than the PlayStation community. You see, they didn't buy Forspoken. They didn't play Foam Stars. They didn't buy enough Final Fantasy 16 copies. That is very clear. That is why Square Enix said they had enough. That was a stupid decision to only have only one uh, community play these games. So now because of seeing the errors of their ways, they are now bringing all of their games day one on Xbox day one on other platforms and um, i i believe that will suit their uh, games better 
So let me hear what you think again with Square Enix, just clarifying and reiterating that here what all of our games going forward is coming to Xbox and other platforms. Let me hear what you think about it in the comment sections below. Next up, let's talk about PlayStation 5 Pro. We know the PlayStation community have been hyping up this console like if it is, it's something new, like if the PlayStation 5 Pro is doing something revolutionary. But we know that it's doing the same thing that Xbox, you know, could have done years ago. Now, here is Digital Foundry confirming that the exact, that the exact thing that the PlayStation um, SSR is doing is the same thing that Microsoft could do if they choose to use it. Listen to them. Now, the reason I'm raising this is because um, uh, th there's been some odd posts on social media. It's like, oh, you know, Sony is finally catching up to Microsoft because they're adding machine learning features. Uh, Xbox Series consoles have had it for the last four years. It's just nobody has used them. Now, Alex, can we clarify this situation? <laughs> I mean, there's an order of magnitude and difference in how much more capable the PS5 right. Pro is than an Xbox Series X or Series S for that matter. The 100 tops thing is in reference to Int4, which is typically not what is used at all for machine learned upscaling. Um, there is nothing preventing Microsoft from trying to make a machine learned model that fits and runs well on the Series X, but they have- Gotcha. Gotcha. So yes, it's confirmed. Microsoft too could potentially roll out their version of the PSSR, um, maybe the XSSR. But we are seeing Microsoft has not. Wouldn't it be something if Microsoft just surprised the gaming community and released their own version of the PSSR? Wouldn't that be a slap in the face for Sony? Because they would have come up with a new console that, you know, they charge uh, 300 more for it. Rather, you would just get an update on your Xbox Series X and your games are able to run even better. Wouldn't that be something? But we are seeing, it's very simple, the PlayStation 5 Pro is not doing something that the Xbox Series X can do. Microsoft would have chosen not to do it at this moment but they, they do it in the near future. But please listen to Jimmy Neutron as he says the PlayStation 5 Pro has something special. It's not just a mid-generation, uh, a mid-gen refresh. It's something even more than that. Listen to um, this guy as he, you know, hypes up his crowd. Now why? Why did it get my attention? Well, she basically is saying that the base PS5 is forcing folks to choose and that that's a little frustrating. This was a launch title for the PS5. This was the game that made the infamous video about the SSD allowing them to do stuff that they were not able to do before on the PS4. And there's actually more as well. Somebody says this in the video. What excites me the most about the PlayStation 5 Pro is that you're basically getting both performance and fidelity in one package. There's no fear of missing out on something by choosing one or the other. It's a really a game changer. Now, we have a dev using a term, fear of missing out, FOMO, that's commonly a frowned upon term in live service games, and basically saying, if you're on the base PS5, there's a fear of missing out because you have to choose between the modes. Now, immediately after this quote, another dev says this, our players no longer have to choose, and that means they are seeing the true vision of the game that we're trying to create. So the true vision of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was constrained on the base PS5. You're going to get the true vision on the PS5 Pro. Now, I'm not sure how else we're supposed to interpret this. I, I don't know how somebody's going to hear this if they just recently bought a base PS5. And they end the video by saying that this will be the best player experience possible. So again, this feels like a big change. And they weren't done. Same developers. I was sitting down to make this video and they drop a trailer for Spider-Man 2 being PS5 Pro enhanced. And they once again, they zero in on the fact that you're not going to have to choose between fidelity and performance mode. And after talking about how they had to compromise performance modes in order to give you that performance, they said this. So your final product ends up being kind of that compromise between the creative vision and the technical limitations that we have. You see the theme continuing here, right? The vision of the game was compromised because of the base PS5. Lastly, they conclude the Spider-Man video and they say this. 
When players play Marvel Spider-Man 2 on PlayStation 5 Pro, they are playing the quintessential version of the Spider-Man experience on the PlayStation 5. So, I just have to restate it again. This does not feel like marketing of a mid-gen refresh for hardcore fans and enthusiasts. This feels like a generational shift right in the middle of the generation. So, Reforge is making it sound like if the PlayStation 5 Pro is more than a mid-gen refresh. He's making it sound like if this is the next generation um, in this console. Well, listen to the PlayStation executive himself as he slaps the hairspray out of Jimmy Neutron's hair and really help him to see to temper his expectation. This is not a next, um, next gen console. This is just simply a refresh. Listen. PS5 Pro fans should taper expectations as CEO states it's not a next gen machine. The PS5 Pro is almost upon us, offering a wealth of PS5 Pro enhanced games that will bring faster frame rates and even 8K gameplay in some extremely rare cases. While the boost in power is brilliant for fans with the cash to splurge on the exorbitant machine, PlayStation CEO Hideaki Nishino wants the bar set low, warning fans the machine is nothing close to a next-gen device. PS5 Pro is far from next-gen. While the new Pro machine is seeing massive updates for games like Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and more, the new console is nothing close to Sony's plans for the PlayStation 6. In fact, PlayStation CEO Hideaki Nishino has gone on record to expressly tell fans the new console is still firmly in the current generation of gaming. In an interview with Variety, the PlayStation executive explained that the new device is simply a way to experience PS5 generation games with an added level of visual fidelity or performance. With the console's CPU being a huge bottleneck, no one should expect the console to be a generational leap in quality. I just wanted to say that the Pro is not a next-gen machine, Nishino explained. It is still in the PS5 generation. PS5 Pro will do everything what PS5 does. So it's a consumer choice. If they see a need for more visuality, they will get it. So we wanted to provide an option for the consumer within the generation, that's what we're doing. A short hop, not a leap. With a massive boost in GPU performance and the introduction of PSSR upscaling, the PS5 Pro does offer some useful additions over the base console. However, as Nishino explains, it's far from a next-gen device. While not confirmed, the next-gen PlayStation 6 console will likely be developed with upscaling and more powerful ray tracing technology in mind from the off, whereas PS5 Pro is more of a reaction to the advancement of that tech on PC. Nevertheless, the new Pro machine does offer better quality for fans who really want it, but it's nowhere near what we'd expect from a PS6. So for all the ponies who are claiming that this console is some sort of a revolution, the CEO, Sony CEO, one of the CEOs is saying, hear what, you guys are smoking crack, you guys need to cool it, this is not a big jump, it's not a big deal. So let me hear what you think about, uh, you know, what was said. Let me hear what you thought about each one of the, uh, you know, topics we would have talked about today um, in the comment sections below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.